Welcome to SOMAS. Um, I, I have a few basic messages for uh, you prospective students today and your parents if, if they're on. And uh, the important one is I want you to come to SOMAS. And I'm gonna just say a few words about why that is and why if you do that, it'll be one of the best decisions of your life. So first, SOMAS is a great school. It's small enough that it feels like a family. It is like a family. If you join SOMAS, you'll be a member of the family for all your life uh, in the most positive way. So it's small enough for that, but, uh, and is a place where you can get personalized mentoring and have great opportunities to work and learn with world-class faculty, but it's also large enough that uh, there's a wide range of opportunities uh, for you to, to study things that you didn't even know were, were disciplines. So we're pretty proud of, of what we do here. Our mission is to advance knowledge and solve critical global and regional problems. We're all about problem solving. Through a study of human and natural uh, systems and how the human and natural parts of the world interact. Um, so uh, as I said, we want you here. to come. So six reasons that you should come. Number one, Stony Brook is a fantastic university. I know I'm from uh, Elmira, New York. I went, uh, did my bachelor's degree in chemistry in a small SUNY college at, at Cortland, New York. This is uh, the flagship of the SUNY system. And there are a variety of reasons that this is where you want to go. Um, we want you to come. That's my second reason. And uh, we want to have the opportunity to work with you, to learn with you. Learning should be a collaboration. Your degree will be a collaboration with the faculty who will be working with you and celebrating your success when, when you're done. It's a great thing to be wanted. So uh, number three here is this is a great place to live. I could go on and on about uh, what a wonderful place the, uh, Long Island and this part of Long Island uh, is, but uh, there's just so much to do here. Um, it's a forest. I had no idea when, when I moved here that this is a forest, but we're like a mile and a half from the ocean. So uh, just geographically interesting uh, and exciting. I also want to say that we need you and the world needs you. SOMAS is about solving problems, grand challenge problems that are facing humanity and the natural world, like dealing with climate change, building resilience against climate change, um, and adapting to change, which we're all uh, after 2020 much better at than, than maybe we wish that we were. Uh, but the world needs you um, to, to do the good work that I, I think we do in, in SOMAS. We have fantastic opportunities for you to study and to learn and to do things that you never imagined that you'd be doing uh, from our semester by the sea program that, that lasts for some students all of their junior year. Usually it's one semester in their junior year, but they spend a full semester at, at least down at the Southampton campus doing what we like to call total immersion learning, literally and, and figuratively. We have a wide array of opportunities if you're an atmospheric scientist, learning about advanced radar meteorology and weather forecasting, um, learning about uh, aquaculture, methods for mitigating climate change and building resilience uh, against uh, uh, changes that, that represent a challenge to, to society. Um, just uh, a fantastic array of opportunities like study abroad. We have study abroad opportunities in, in uh, Tanzania, in uh, Kenya, in more exotic places like uh, Ireland, 
We have the winter semester in Jamaica, which is mostly underwater. All of our students in marine science need to learn to dive. So that's an exciting thing. Um, and uh, I guess last, you will uh, end up being endowed with a wide array of uh, very important, useful skills, including communication skills. They're often the thing that gets you a job, but also problem solving skills that will lead you on a path to great careers. Our students end up um, living and working all around the world, all around the United States, many times here in Long Island for companies like IBM, uh, NGOs like the Nature Conservancy, sometimes with Suffolk County, which, which shares uh, in work with us on water quality problems and air quality problems on Long Island. Um, uh, there's New York City Office of Sustainability works with us on mitigating climate change. There's NOAA and the National Weather Service, the Environmental Protection Agency, Department of Transportation, Department of Health has been a big one this year. There's a wide array and our, our students end up um, not just getting good jobs, but having a fantastic career in an area that feels like you're doing important work. Students come to SOMAS often because they wanna save the world. That's what we're trying to do, one problem at a time. And uh, we wanna do it with you. It, it'll be meaningful and exciting and uh, open up a whole new world with you and, and for you. And uh, we like to have a partnership here with our students, as I said. Um, so thanks for being here and much to Amanda's delight, I will now stop talking. Anyway, it's good to see you. Thank you for Thank being you here. Thank you so much, Paul. We really appreciate you welcoming our guests today. And now we're going to move on to the panel, um, the Q&A portion, where you'll have an opportunity to meet the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences students. And they're going to answer some questions um, that are uh, that we have. We're actually going to get things started with Abigail with Abby, who's going to introduce herself and then we'll talk a little bit about any environmental or sustainability efforts that she's involved in on campus or in the community. Take it away, Abby. Hi, uh, can you guys hear me well? Yes. Awesome, great. Um, my name is Abigail, or you can call me Abby. I am a sophomore majoring in marine sciences. I'm from Walden, which is in Orange County, roughly about 100 miles from Stony Brook. Um, I'm in C-STEP, involved in Color Stack, the Environmental Studies Club, and of course, the Marine Sciences Club. Um, I enjoy gardening and playing video games in my free time. And addressing the question, are you involved in, in any environmental or sustainability efforts on or off campus? I am cu currently in the process of running for the USG Senate. And one of my initiatives is advocating for more sustainable living. So um, just to go a bit more in detail, we're, we wanna work on um, approaching FSA, working on more sustainable efforts, such as um, using more, more, more organic materials for utensils such as straws and forks and knives in the dining hall as well as other options, so. Thank you so much, Abby, that was great. Um, the next question is for Alex. Alex, after you introduce yourself, the question for you is, are you involved in any clubs and organizations on campus? And just in general, what's the process like to join a club, to get involved? And in general, do you feel welcome at Stony Brook? Sure. So hi, guys. My name is Alex. I am a sophomore um, sustainability and environmental studies major. Um, I'm from Yonkers, New York. It's right above the Bronx. It's about a 90 minute drive from Stony Brook. I'm currently living on campus uh, in Lauderdale Hall. Uh, it's been my second year living on campus. Uh, the vibe is a bit different this year, of course, but uh, there's always things to do. 
Um, addressing the question, I am currently involved in the environmental club. Uh, we do a lot of, well, before coronavirus, we used to do a lot of hands-on activities um, off campus, you know, including uh, beach cleanups, hikes, camping, kayaking, you know, all kinds of outdoorsy stuff. Uh, this semester, we've pretty much converted everything to an online format. So we're taking more of an educational approach um, to try to start a discussion with our members about different uh, controversial environmental topics, um, overpopulation, um, different different things that really um, start uh, conversations. Um, to get involved, you, there's not really a lot of strict rules. Um, every semester, there's going to be an involvement fair, uh, wherein um, all the clubs will display their their members. They'll speak a bit about what their club does, or what kind of activities they do. Um, there's not really a lot of rules. Um, you know, you're not. There's not like applications. You're not going to get kicked out of a club because you missed one meeting. Um, it's really up to you how much you want to be involved. Um, I've never felt pressured or you know shamed if I missed a meeting. Um, uh, for environmental club, they actually reached out to me because uh, they were looking for eboard members. So um, they saw that I was dedicated in my freshman year and they were able to, they reached out to me and they said, hey, uh, we want you to be on our eboard. So I actually became the secretary and that was a great way for me to become more involved. Um, and really be the change I wanted to see in the club. Um, there's also tons of other clubs and stuff, uh, not limited to environmental environmentalism. Uh, there's a wide uh, array of stuff. So you can really find what you're looking for here on campus. There's always gonna be something for, for you to do. So that's about it, thanks. Thanks, Alex, that's great. Uh, the next question is for Alyssa. Have you studied abroad or through National Student Exchange um, where did you go? What was it like? What was the process like? And again, don't forget to introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Alyssa, and I'm a senior studying environmental studies as my major, and I have a double minor in GIS and business management. And if you're wondering what GIS is, it's basically mapping uh, using spatial data. So if you use Google Maps or even seen like the COVID numbers map, you've seen the products of GIS. Uh, I live on Long Island and we're about 30 minutes away from campus. I used to live on campus prior to the pandemic, but now I'm fully remote, so I'm living at home. Uh, and I am currently a volunteer for the Ashley Schiff Preserve as a GIS mapper. And a uh, fun fact about me is that I love the Great British Baking Show. <laughs> um, as for study abroad. I went abroad to Ireland and England for about a month a couple summers ago and I know for some programs students stay in dorms at a university but I found that my program was really unique in the fact that my professor took a group of students and we traveled all around Ireland so we didn't stay in one place. We went to the Aran Islands, the Cliffs of Moher, Burren National Park, Galway, Dublin, and to Northern Ireland, like Belfast. And we spent a week in London and then we saw how different that was compared to Ireland. And I just can't say enough great things about my study abroad experience. Uh, it was really a holistic learning experience. I not only learned about why the natural environment over there is the way it is, but also how Irish history and culture tie into it. So I definitely recommend taking the opportunity to study abroad if you can. Thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. Uh, next, we're gonna go to Bree with a question about, um, how did you know Stony Brook was right for you? Thank you, Amanda. Hi, everyone, my name is Bree. I was born and raised in New York City, specifically in the Bronx. I graduated from the Ursuline School in New Rochelle. I'm a second year undergraduate student on, at Stony Brook, as well as a resident on campus. I'm currently pursuing a marine vertebrate biology degree at SOMAS. My dream career right now would be to um, do marine research at an aquarium, anything that focuses on animals, maybe sharks, because I find them so fascinating, even though others might think they're um, scary. 
Um, a little bit about my involvement on campus. I'm part of the Collegiate Science and Technology Entry Program, or CSTEP for short, because that is a mouthful. And that's an organization across most, if not all SUNY schools, whose goal is to support students um, of underrepresented and disadvantaged backgrounds in their pursuit of STEM careers. I'm also in um, Stony Brook's chapter for the Society uh, for Women in Marine Science, or SWIMS as we call it, and that's another organization that's built a coast-to-coast -coast network of mentors and mentees for women in marine science like me. I'm also in the um, environmental and marine science clubs like many of my um, fellow students here. During my free time, I enjoy going for nature walks and roller skating up and down my street, but on my more lazy days, you'll probably catch me watching anime or playing video games. So now to answer the question of why I chose Stony Brook, what really drew me to Stony Brook, well, actually there was many reasons, but the two I'll talk to, the first um, was very important to my family and that was um, the affordability. Um, the cost at Stony Brook for me um, is much less than that of an out-of-state student because I am an in-state student and that was important to my family. So that was a big plus. Another reason was SOMAS. It actually was the main reason why I chose Stony Brook. So, um, uh, when I was in high school and choosing colleges, I knew that I wanted to do marine science and I knew I needed a school that would have like the um, programs and the types of faculty members and things that I needed to pursue that career. So when I was on the SOMAS website and I learned about the semester by the sea program, as well as the study abroad programs, I was like, wow, this is something that I can really dive into what it is that I'm passionate about. And Dean um, Shepson actually touched on this earlier, but also the geographical location of Stony Brook is perfect for studying marine science because we have access to both the Long Island Sound as well as the Atlantic Ocean. Thank you. Excellent. Um, and our next question today is for Chelsea. Um, after you introduce yourself, if you could tell us a little bit um, also about how you knew Stony Brook was right for you, especially because you live five hours away from, from Stony Brook. So my name is Chelsea and I am a freshman at Stony Brook and my major is Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences. And I live in Utica, New York, uh, which is like close to Syracuse. And I am involved in Meteorology Club and Sea Step as well. And um, one of, the, one of my favorite shows is Attack on Titan, which is unfortunately ending after like seven years or something like that. And so the question of how did I know Stony was for me was, well, um, well not, like before COVID and everything, I would go to these campus tours and like almost every time the tour guides would say, I knew this was for me because once I stepped in, they just like knew automatically. And so at first I didn't understand what they were like, say because I didn't experience it when going to different colleges but when I went to Stony Brook I realized oh this is the feeling they were talking about okay I get it now and besides that another reason why I chose Stony Brook was because of like the type of school it was not it wasn't too big nor it wasn't too small it was like a medium fit and also it revolved more around research than, than anything else which I like want to be want to go in in the future and that's why I um close to school and also it was one of the SUNY schools that had meteorology club not, uh, had meteorology as a major so yeah thank you great job Chelsea that was excellent our next question is for Darlene um, are you involved in any clubs or organizations again how did you join these groups and did you feel or do you feel welcome at Stony Brook hi thank you Amanda my name is Darlene. I'm a senior at Stony Brook, and I have a major of atmospheric science and a minor in journalism. Um, I'm from West Point, New York, so about an hour above the city, two hours from Stony Brook. Um, I'm involved in quite a bit, so I'm a resident assistant. I was an orientation leader. I'm the president of the meteorology club, so I'll get to that for involvement. Um, and fun fact, I love to snowboard. But um, I would say the meteorology club is what brought me to Stony Brook and it's such a great club. We're all there for each other. We go to conferences, we do networking opportunities. Um, I know a little bit earlier, like people were asking how to get involved and how to enter the club. You just show up. We're all like there for each other. We all practice like presentations with each other. Um, it's a very supportive group. It's what made me come to Stony Brook and it's really lived up to its name. I've networked through it and I've also um, been able to become the president through starting off as public relations, then going to vice president 
And with this role, I've also gotten an internship with Fox Weather. So highly, highly recommend the Meteorology Club. Thank you so much, Darlene. Our next question is for Francesca. Uh, this question um, is if you could talk a little bit about class size at Stony Brook, what your classes are um, like, and if that's changed you know, from freshman year onward. Um, and also if you could touch on what is a TA? We get that question a lot. And if you have been to TA or if there are any benefits that you can think of, please share that with us as well. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. So hi everyone, my name is Francesca. I'm a junior and my major is environmental design policy and planning, which is kind of like urban planning, but it's undergrad. And I'm a GIS minor, just like Alyssa, as she mentioned before. I'm from Bethpage, which is in Nassau County. It's about 45 to 50 minutes west of Stony Brook. And um, involvement, I'm one of the lead editors for um, The Torch, which is a magazine for the scholars program. I'm a tutor at the ASTC, which is the Academic Success and Tutoring Center. I was on the dance team at school for about two years. And uh, this semester I'm doing an internship with Stony Brook's Institute for STEM Education and I'm making maps for them. Um, when I'm not in school, I'm drawing with uh, charcoal. And for the question, so what this the class size. So um, definitely different from freshman year to my junior year now. My first year I had large classes, especially the foundational ones like the math ones, chem and economics. They have hundreds of students in the lectures, but the larger classes have a different structure than the, than the smaller ones. Um, as you have a lecture and a TA um, in your recitation or also in a lecture, it just depends on which class you're taking. So each lecture has numerous recitations, usually for like the big ones, uh, like the foundational ones. And um, the TAs can be an undergrad or a graduate student. So um, this semester, just a little insight, this semester my classes range from 30 to 80 people, but my freshman year it was like 500 to 30. So it, it totally depends on the class. So what is a TA? Again, a TA can be an undergrad or a grad, and it depends on the course. Either way, a TA is extremely beneficial to your learning experience in college. They have taken the course before and know the subject very well. So if you're ever having problems or confusion, uh, definitely reach out and ask for help because that's what they're there for. Um, I've been a TA twice and I absolutely loved it. You do receive upper division credit when you complete the TA ship, which is great. And as a TA, you get to engage with the material from a different lens and in my experience, understand the subject matter even further. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, and now the next question is for Grace. It's actually the same question. We just want a different perspective or your perspective on class sizes at Stony Brook, um, you know, differences from when you first started and um, also expanding any insight into the TA question. Take it away, Grace. Hey guys, um, my name is Grace. I'm currently a senior at Stony Brook University. Um, I'm a major in environmental humanities, which is probably something not a lot of you have heard of before. Um, I came into Stony Brook very um, unsure of what I wanted to do. I came from University at Albany, where I studied biology, and it just seemed very generic. And I didn't really see the path where I'd be going there, so I transferred here to Stony Brook. I found SOMAS, and um, I entered the environmental humanities field, and uh, I would consider that to be like a backbone of a lot of the the hard sciences, um, it's very like, you have, it's a lot of thinking, a lot of um, reading and, but it's a very like good critical analysis of a lot of science, which we don't always think about, um, especially in the marine sciences, which is really amazing that EHM is able to be a part of the SOMA science. Um, as far as involvement in clubs and organizations, I haven't really been able to do a lot of clubs. I am uh, off campus. I live about 45 minutes away. Um, so I haven't really been involved in a lot of clubs. And I think that's something I might regret, especially in my senior year now. So I think if there was anything I could go back and change, it would definitely to be more involved in clubs if I had a better idea of where my uh, major was going to be headed towards. Um, 
As far as internships, I uh, actually recently got a job through SOMAS with APIS, which is affiliated with the DEC as a fisheries technician. And I start there April 1st. So that's just an example of the careers and opportunities that SOMAS can basically hand you. I mean, we get a million emails a day, I'm sure everybody knows, but there's some really good information in there and a lot of jobs that just open up doors. And I think that's really amazing. Um, as far as the questions goes, at class sizes, um, they start out kind of large. Um, that's something you need to expect when attending a large university. Um, I've had classes anywhere from 500 students to like 12 students. Um, it's important not to just be a number. It's important to stand out and to get in contact with not, not even just the professor, the TA is just have somebody that, you know, that's going to be in your corner and on your side. Um, I found the TAs to be super helpful. I think a lot of the times, if you're too <laughs> afraid to ask the professor questions like, oh, I know they went over this in lecture, the TA is there for you. That's their job. They're there to help you. And I think that's something a lot of people don't take advantage of, but it really made a difference in my last two years here is just kind of bothering that TA to get a couple, some, some guidance, you know? And um, second one is COVID-19. How does that change how you take classes? Um, so yeah, this is a super interesting question and it's super relevant. Um, I think for the most part, it's changed the dynamic of the relationship that you have with your peers. And I think it creates a whole new kind of challenge. I think that we're gonna need to <laughs> kind of feel our, feel our way around. And I think it's, um, it's presented a lot of opportunities, but as well as a lot of challenges. Um, lastly, this is my, <laughs> this is where I work now. I work for Cornell Cooperatives. This is one of the really fun fish that we have there. It's an oyster toad fish. So just a little fun fact for you guys, but uh, thank you. That's all I have. <laughs> Excellent, Grace. That was great. Our next question is for James. Um, after you introduce yourself, can you tell us a little bit about research at Stony Brook? What have you done? Um, how did you connect to research opportunities? What was that process like for you? Thank you, Amanda. Uh, my name is James. I'm a sophomore studying environmental studies and economics. I'm from Levittown, New York, which is around 45 minutes from Stony Brook. And like Amanda said, I'm involved in research. I've also had inter internships in conservation and environmental advocacy. Uh, something else about me is I'm hoping to use my degree from Stony Brook to serve in the US Coast Guard. Um, onto the question. I'm currently a research assistant for a team at SOMAS that's trying to determine the mean high water line, which is basically a measure of the average high tide for a coastline near Stony Brook. So for that position, I take observations of tide staffs. I plot points in ArcGIS, which, like Alyssa said, is a very important skill to learn. Um, and I've also had the chance to get out on the water to maintain an offshore tide gauge. And yeah, I'm getting a lot of experience uh, working outside using GIS um, and getting my foot in the door with research. So I strongly uh, recommend getting involved in research. And I was connected to this opportunity by uh, Kamazima Louisa, who is the director of undergraduate programs. He connected me to a professor that I did well in the class of in a previous semester. So to get involved in research, just ask your professors, try and do well in your classes. And the worst they could do is say no. Thank you. Great. Um, our next question is for Matthew. Um, can you tell us a little bit about any involvement in env environmental or sustainability efforts on campus? Thanks, Amanda. Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Coletta. I'm a senior at Stony Brook. Um, I'm from the Rockaways, which is the technically the southernmost point of Queens, but it is also connected to Long Island. Um, I'm majoring in environmental design policy and planning, and I have two minors. I have one in GIS and I have one in sustainability studies um, on campus. Well, I guess I'll get into this in a little bit, but on campus, I'm the treasurer for environmental club. Um, and previously I've been the chair for the sustainable solutions committee and also a member of the Ecolition. Um, and during my time at Stony Brook, I've lived on campus for my first three years. And then since COVID, um, I've been living off campus. Um, and as far as the question goes, I've been a member uh, of Environmental Club since my very uh, first semester at Stony Brook and have been an e-board member for about, I think, over two years at this point. Um, 
and I know Alex spoke a little bit about this as well, so I don't want to repeat everything, but we, we typically hold a lot of uh, weekend events and on-campus events during the semester. Uh, things are a little bit different with COVID, uh, but before COVID, we would host documentary nights, zero waste workshops, club collaborations, uh, weekend trips, seal watching, hiking all over Long Island. So we're, we were a pretty active club um, and we really want our members to learn through doing and learn through experiences. Um, and so that's one way that we really educate our members. Um, and then as the chair of the Sustainable Solutions Committee, that's a sort of a subset of environmental club and that's a much smaller group setting um, where you have maybe 10 or 11 students and you kind of dedicate the semester to working through a problem that you see on campus with an end goal being accomplish X, Y, Z by this time, maybe next year or next semester. Um, and as chair of that committee, I actually helped implement um, an intro to sustainability course for freshmen. Um, so that was my topic that I decided to work on for the year. Um, other students worked on getting more greenery on campus. Um, I know some students were working on trying to plant more trees. So uh, it's really grassroots stuff that we worked on in this, um, in this group setting. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Excellent, thank you so much. Our next question is for Morgan. Um, please introduce yourself. And then if you could touch on uh, research opportunities, research you've done, how you connected to research, that would be great. Absolutely, thank you, Amanda. Um, hi, my name is Morgan. I'm a senior sustainability studies major. I have a minor in health and wellness, as well as leadership development. Um, I was a transfer. I transferred from Suffolk County Community College, and I did transfer in as a business major. Um, and then I ended up changing my major to sustainability studies. Um, I'm from Selden, New York, so about 15 minutes down Nichols Road. Um, my involvement in clubs kind of extends to uh, students helping Honduras. Um, I've, I've been to a couple meetings. Uh, I really wish I, I was a little bit more active, uh, like was, was mentioned before by Grace, just uh, really trying to get active in, in clubs. Um, but really, I have made some good friends from the few times that I did go. Um, something about me is I have four poodles. Um, and, and then going on to the research, uh, actually, as a business major, when I was here first, I ended up doing research with Facebook. Uh, I was a part of Cap Lab. Um, basically, what happened was it was my very first semester at Stony Brook. Uh, I was a little bit intimidated, but I knew I was at this wonderful research university. I was like, and my mom and everybody kept telling me, take advantage of it, take advantage of it. So really, I just asked my professor. I asked him about three or four times, hey, can you tell me about your research? So I took that little tidbit of information, carried it on a couple of weeks later. Hey, do you have research assistance? Is there a possibility that I can get involved? Um, and then we ended up implementing watch party for Facebook. Uh, we ended up coding individuals facial expressions while they were watching um, basically a, a funny video. And I've ended up watching that video at least a thousand times. Uh, to me, it's not so funny anymore, but watching other people laugh at it was funny. Um, and then uh, another research I've done on, on campus is um, I'm looking at the effects of AMPA, which is a degradation of glyphosate, which is in the herbicide Roundup sold by Monsanto. Uh, we're looking at the effects of AMPA on planaria, which is a flatworm. Um, and flatworms, when you cut them in half, bisect them, they actually regenerate. So we're trying to translate that to um, neurobiology and basically uh, classify AMPA as a neurotoxin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Morgan. Our next uh, student panelist, um, Sierra, will actually be answering the same question, a little bit about research, how to connect to research, and what that um, is like at Stony Brook after you introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Sierra, and I'm a junior marine science major. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, so I'm like two hours away by LIRR um, and I am involved on a lot of things on campus. Um, I've done work as a TA last semester. I've done research, which I'll talk about in a second. 
Um, I'm also part of two clubs and I also work within the athletics department. So I'm kind of everywhere. <laughs> um, and a fun fact about myself is I'm a K-pop fan. So I really like K-pop. Um, I've listened to BTS for like seven years. So, um, but in terms of research, I did do research um, last semester. So when I was a first semester junior um, and I found out about the research through um, the weekly like Wednesday wave emails we always get. Um, and basically the Wednesday waves are like information about what's going on on campus or off campus, any lectures, any job opportunities, research opportunities, anything like that. Um, and we get them every Wednesday. Um, and I found out about a research opportunity with a graduate student um, at the Peterson lab. Um, so I spent the semester working with him and doing work on like uh, black sea bass and how black sea bass um, and crustaceans, how black sea bass affect crustaceans um, feeding habits. So the lack of black sea bass or the presence of black sea bass. Um, and this was an online internship, which was kind of different than other ones um, because I was basically watching like hours and hours of footage via the computer and like doing all my research via there, which in the past it had been on um, in person. So I really enjoyed it. Um, I still think I got a lot of knowledge and I learned a lot about the different marine animals that were there and how to do research, but it was definitely different than in person. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now we're gonna loop back around to Abby. Um, Abby, can you tell us a little bit about how uh, COVID-19 uh, changed how you take classes this year um, and what impact um, the pandemic had on how you study and what are your general thoughts about Stony Brook's response to coronavirus this year? Thank you so much, Amanda. Um, initially, okay, how did COVID-19 change how I take classes? I had to hold myself accountable much more than I did in the previous year. So I have probably three or four different calendars. I have one on my wall, two on my phone, and one on my computer. And then I have like a physical agenda just to make sure, you know, I hit everything I need to do daily. So I need to respond to this person, reach out to that person. And then I have my calendar for like my week. Okay, so I need to finish this application by the end of the week. I need to write up this report by the end of the week. Just holding yourself a bit more accountable because you're a little more on your own in a sense. You just have to make sure that you're, you're say you're taking one or two asynchronous classes, make, making sure that you're watching all the lecture videos, submitting all the assignments on time because the professors for that course may not be very communicative because it's asynchronous, if that makes sense. So really just holding yourself accountable, managing your time a bit, a bit more and just putting forth that extra effort because it really matters, especially with um, remote learning. The second part of that question, what impact has the pandemic had on how I study? Um, it led me to kind of, I don't know how to explain this, but make my space that I study in my own space. So I have like two different lights going, I have my diffuser. I wanna make sure that I'm comfortable in this space so I can sit down and study for four hours or six hours or switch to a different subject or I can get up and take a break and then sit back down and pick up, automatically resume on my studies if that makes sense. It just really like led me to know myself kind of, understand myself and discipline myself so that I'm able to do what I need to do for the week or for the month or for any course. And the last part of that question, I'm really sorry, last part of that question, how would I rate Stony Brook's response to COVID-19? And if I am living on campus now, what is that like or how is it different? Um, I am living on campus here, Kelly Quad and Lauterbur, just like Alex. Um, it, it's nice, but it's just a little bit quieter because most of my friends are off campus. 
and it makes me I guess a little less social but Stony Brook's response to the COVID-19 situation has been pretty fair I think a lot more efforts could be made but I think as an institution they're trying their best they want the best for their students um, but it's just something that we have to deal with as individuals and as one body, just kind of get through it because it's all affecting us in different ways. So thank you. Excellent, thank you, Abby. Our next question is for Alex and it's about basically about campus. What's campus like? Do you have a favorite place on campus? Whether that's a favorite place to study or a favorite place to eat or just to hang out on campus? Right, so Abby talked a little about um, how campus is a bit different this semester. Um, last year, it was kind of like, there's always gonna be people no matter where you go. So to find your like little secluded study spot was a bit of a challenge. Um, I definitely have some secret spots that um, I may or not reveal, but this semester it's a bit more chill. Uh, you can always find a nice study spot uh in every building pretty much um my favorite buildings i try to stay away from the library from the most part because that's a pretty popular spot um the library is good if you want like a more social kind of study spot um if you want like the atmospheric feeling of you know people studying around you so kind of like a community study uh, but if you want more of an isolated study um there's buildings like the social and behavioral science building that has uh, nice lounges that have plants, tables, um, couches, uh, and it's pretty, pretty empty for the most part. There's also the humanities building, which has the nice atrium that has very great lighting. Um, it's a nice, peaceful spot. Uh, one of my personal favorite spots would have to be the Wang Center. Um, it's a, it's pretty much like almost kind of like a museum in itself. So if you're like kind of more like a nice museum kind of cafe feel. Um, there's fountains, there's art exhibits, there's even, we have, there's a Zen, Zen rock garden room in there, uh, which is pretty quiet. So if you need like a moment of silence, it's always nice. Um, in terms of favorite places to eat on and off campus, um, there's always Jasmine, which is in the Wang Center. That's uh, pretty much the, best regarded place to eat on campus. They have a wider um, range of like Asian food, like sushi, uh, stuff like that. Um, off campus, my favorite spot would have to be Port Jeff. There's a great amount of different restaurants and the, the setting is really pretty. My personal favorite place would have to be Slurp, Slurp Ramen. Um, it's a nice, pretty chill place. They even do delivery to, to Stony Brook, so that's nice. But if you want to go to the actual restaurant, uh, it's fairly cheap and the the quality is really good. Um, so that's about it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Alex. Our next question is for Alyssa. Um, when you, how did you choose your major? What was that process like for you? Um, what about double majoring or minors? What what was the selection process like, and was it easy to do? Yeah, I would love to talk about that, Amanda. Thank you. Uh, when I first came into Stony Brook University, I originally wanted to be a veterinarian and I was really motivated to do it. I went to pre-vet programs all throughout high school. I shadowed a vet um, and I even joined like pre-vet club when I was here, but like there's some, there was something that wasn't sitting right with me. Like I, the more I took biology classes and chemistry lab, uh, the more I realized I didn't want to be in the lab running tests or analyzing tests. Um, that just wasn't for me, but I still wanted to do something science related. So I actually had an aha moment during a introductory poetry class, <laughs> if you can believe it. Uh, I was reading a poem and I had to make a video project for it. So I went to the bay nearby my house and I was filming some stuff and uh, I looked at the water and I was like oh my god this quality of water is not how I remember it from when I was a kid um, 
And that moment really just got me jump started into uh, this major, which is environmental studies. Um, and it was a pretty easy switch. Honestly, all I had to do was get a form filled out. And I took the extra step of meeting with the SOMAS advisor and I um, had them help me plan out my schedule to make sure that I was able to graduate in four years. And as for my minor, it was pretty much the same process, just signing that form. Uh, everyone was very supportive. Uh, they made the process super easy, especially during a time during a major switch. Um, it's it can be very confusing and you can feel very conflicted, but everyone's just there to help you. And yeah, that's really it. Thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. Our next question is for Bree. Uh, have you taken advantage of any student support services offered by the university? Um, are they helpful? What are some of the student support options? Sure, I'd love to answer this. Um, so the first thing I actually noticed when I came to campus uh, at, at Stony Brook, and this actually happened the summer before my um, fall freshman year, because I was in, I was doing uh, the summer residential program of the organization I mentioned, I was in C-STEP. And the first thing I noticed was that there are so many support systems and everyone that I spoke to that they introduced us to um, in those support systems, and I'll mention a few of them now, they genuinely wanted to help me and my other and the other students. So um, whether it's you're looking for academic help, we have offices for that. If you're looking for health, whether it's physical or mental, we have offices for that as well. Um, just really whatever you needed, there were counselors, advisors, everyone you could imagine to help. So some of the ones that I've taken um, advantage of in the past are um, peer assisted learning. I'm actually doing that this semester. And this is one of the programs that the Academic Success and Tutoring Center offers. And what happens is, is that these are right now they're virtual, but they are um, sessions that you go to where a it's sort of like a TA, but they're not, you know, officially have that position name. They're sort of just like um, undergraduate or graduate students who have taken the course that you're taking before and they have passed it they know the material the person that i'm currently working with his name is kashan and he is um a math genius and i'm taking it for my pre -cal uh, sorry calculus b class right now because i'm not a very good math person and what we do in this class is that he goes over practice problems he tries out to he tries to explain things in a different way in case you're not getting it the way that the professor explained it and this helps me a lot especially in a class like math that i struggle in because i get personalized attention um we talked about class sizes before our math class uh, math classes tend to be big ones because it's a popular uh, subject and you need it for a lot of stem uh, major classes so i love that i get that personalized attention and i get to do practice problems with him and work through things um because uh, one thing about me is that when I see a math problem that I've never touched on before, I have absolutely no idea how to approach it. So the fact that I get um, exposure to some uh, problems that I haven't seen before is really good. And it's not just math that we have peer assisted learning in, there's many other classes as well. Um, another office I've taken uh, advantage of is the SASE office, as we call it, which stands for Student Accessibility and Support Center. And what this um, office uh, aims to do is help students who have special needs in uh, that are like are kind of blocking them from getting the best academic um, education that they can. Um, for me in my freshman year, I found out that, I, so it was different from high school because I was in smaller classes, but when I came on to Stony Brook and I had to take exams in big lecture halls, like in Javits, which is our biggest lecture hall with like four, uh, four to 500 seats in our largest lecture room, um, I found out that I have test anxiety. Um, and this stems from like when you see when you're taking a test and you notice that someone gets up before you and you realize you haven't even like finished half of the questions that makes me really anxious and nervous. So what I did was is I went to SASE and they communicated with my professor and me to set up what they call privatized testing and you get to take um, test in a private room with yourself uh, with a moderator who will you know politely watch you they're not staring at you but just um there as a gentle moderator and you get that person uh, that time that you need to take your quiz or exam um and so that you're not feeling anxious about it and then the last one i want to talk about is the student health center i've also taken advantage advantage of this i very much encourage you to take advantage of all of the support systems we have on campus um since they uh, some of them are included in tuition, so you're paying for it, so why not? Um, 
the Student Health Center has counseling, uh, mental health counseling in a different way, uh, different ways they offer it. Um, the one that I took advantage of last spring, actually before COVID hit, um, I was struggling in my academics and it was making me, it was, I was getting down on, my, on myself and it was, uh, I was struggling with confidence in my academics. And I basically talked to a counselor who helped me through it. We just had uh, conversations on how I can um, change my attitude and how I feel about academics and about myself. And that was very helpful. Um, I very much encourage you guys to uh, explore all the academic services that we have. And the advice that I would give is that um, Stony Brook has whatever you need. I promise you it does, whether, like I mentioned, whether it's academic or uh, mental health or um, um, even looking for careers and internships, we have it. Um, my advice would be just to take the initiative to look for it and, you know, um, go out of your comfort zone to look for it, maybe on websites or talk to your professors or, or maybe even other friends, other students, like you guys are already have a leg up because a lot of freshmen and admitted students don't know about it, but you guys are, you know, being told about some of them here. So go ahead and find those things so that when you need them, you already know about them and they're within reach. Thank you. Excellent. That was great, Bree. Our next question is for Chelsea. Um, if you could tell us a little bit about what your perspective is on campus, uh, what campus is like, any kind of favorite places or favorite things. Yeah, of course. So um, at first, I, I was kind of like scared of going out on campus because of like how the change differences like in, in regards like size. And I was like scared of, oh my God, how am I gonna make friends? I don't, I'm not that like socially like active. I'm more of an introvert. And so I'm like, I, I'm freaking out, like how am I supposed to make friends? And so like using like social media such as Facebook, Discord and a group me, I'll explain that later on. Um, I was able to make connections and make some friends as well. And, but for that, I had to like push myself to take the initiative and say, and like take the first step and try to make connections as well. As for ca uh, campus itself, I say, well, I can't really compare it to anything because I'm a freshman, but I say it's pretty okay with how like COVID, COVID is and everything. Um, usually on the weekends, it's much more quieter because more majority of people kind of like move, like go back to New York City because like, that's what they're close to. And also some of the, um, buildings closed a bit earlier as well during the weekends. And for um, is it, uh, my favorite place on campus, I'd say is the Health Sciences Library located in the Stony Brook Hospital. Like when I first went in there with my friend, it was like the most beautiful building I've ever seen. Like although it's a hospital, it was like so like nice, you know? And um, where I like to study, I usually like, Depend, depending, I usually stay at my dorm and like just like do whatever I want. But also I would like to change like senior as well. Like as Amanda said, like, um, or, or someone said that like the, uh, the environment of other people study helps me like motivate myself to like do work as well. And favorite place to eat off campus. Um, I usually, I don't go off campus cause I don't have like transportation and Favorite places to eat? I, I don't know. I'm not that picky with food, so I just I just go wherever. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Uh, we have time for a couple more questions. I know it's approaching five o'clock, so if for any guests that are joining us that do have to leave um, right at five o'clock, we really appreciate you being here. We're going to keep going with a few more questions, so you're more than welcome to stay. I have posted a couple of links to ways that you can get in touch with us if you need to leave. Um, our next question is for um, Darlene, also on the uh, student support services um, offered at the university. Um, if you could discuss that a little bit, that would be great. Sure, thank you. So similar to what Bree said earlier about the Academic Success Tutoring Center, um, this saved my whole Stony Brook career. So when I got here, I saw that I had to take all four calcs, so calc one through calc four, and it was terrifying. I didn't know what a derivative was. I didn't know where to start. Um, I was in like a 300 person class and I was too afraid to ask the professor a question. So I started going to the Academic Success Tutoring Center. I got a one-on-one -on -one tutor 
and I booked appointments for twice a week, completely free. It's part of tuition. So I would say make use of it. Also, I continued that through Calc 2 and I finished Calc 4 a year ago. And it's really, really helped me. If you're even like questioning one small thing of Calc, I would say make an appointment, go to your tutoring session. Like the worst it can do is help you get a better grade. It's a great center. Thank you. Thank you, Darlene. Uh, the next question is for Francesca. Um, we, can you talk a little bit about the professors who teach your classes? Is it easy to connect with them? What do they like? Can you relate to them? We'd love to hear about that. Sure, thanks, Amanda. Um, so what are the faculty like? So each professor I've had is extremely personable and understanding, especially now. Um, I feel like people aren't as inclined to reach out to their professors because it's just through a screen right now. But if you just send that email and request office hours, it definitely enhances your learning experience. Um, as a freshman during orientation, you're going to be hearing uh, all, like all of the speakers talk about how important it is to make those connections and ask your professors for office hours and talk to them. And it, it really, it really does help. And it really does, it really helps you learn. Um, uh, so by going to these office hours and talking to the professors, you're obviously gaining more knowledge and clearing that confusion. And because you spend time in office hours, you will likely enjoy the class more and hopefully participate too. So talking to these professors is super easy. And especially the Salt Moss professors I've had super great experiences with. Thank you. Now, I know Grace already talked a little bit about um, COVID-19 and it, her, the impact on classes. Um, Grace, could you tell us a little bit about what um, a typical day in the life of a Stony Brook undergraduate student might be like? I know there's really no typical, but uh, maybe just about your experience, a typical day or week. Uh, yeah, definitely um, a typical day involves a lot of studying, especially um, once you're junior or senior level status, I would say, you need to put, especially if you're in a, a hard science or humanities, so there's a lot of reading and writing. Um, the work is really worth it. And I think once you um, see kind of like the product of your work, it's very rewarding. So a lot of my time does revolve around studying. I do also work a lot. I currently work two different jobs. So I'm kind of trying to find a balance between school and work. Um, I think it's very important to prioritize also your own time. I think it's, I think the best thing I found for me is to look for things that I enjoy and find things that kind of like ease the anxiety with, with studying, with like just prepping for tests and quizzes. I think it's important to find the things that you enjoy or a place that you enjoy that you can kind of go to and kind of take a step back from that and say, oh, I know school is so important. I know work is so important, but I don't, would never want to sacrifice my mental health for that. So I think, especially as an incoming freshman, you kind of bypass, oh, my mental health is not important right now. Like I need to focus, I need to study, I need to work, but um, your health is really important. So I would say prioritize that every single day. I think that's really important. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Uh, the next question is for James, and it's about internships or co-ops in SOMAS fields, and are you familiar with any? So I've had two internships in my time at Stony Brook. I'm an environmental studies major. Um, in the spring of my freshman year, I started as an intern at a climate change advocacy nonprofit. <clears throat> and my tasks include organizing uh, a group of high school students part of a larger nonprofit to engage their elected officials to like pass renewable energy laws. I also managed the organization's websites, did grants, uh, wrote press releases. Um, and this past summer, I had another internship as a conservation steward. So that was working at nature preserves on Long Island, managing invasive species, doing GIS work, managing trails, doing environmental education. Um, so both these experiences showed me two different sides of what you could do in the environmental studies major. So political policy advocacy and conservation, you know, 
those are two sides of the field. And my advice is apply for as many internships as you can, even if you don't think it's exactly what you want. And apply early. Don't think you should wait necessarily until your junior or senior year. Um, yeah, internships are great. I encourage you to apply as much as you can. Thank you. Excellent. And a question for Matthew um, about choosing your major, um, adding a minor, double majoring, um, what the process of choosing your major was like. So my process is a little long winded. I actually came into Stony Brook uh, as an environmental science major, but I found that it was too science heavy and too numbers heavy. Um, and at the time I was a new member of environmental club. So I had spoken with a lot of members and uh, they were all really excited about this new sustainable solution, uh, sustainable uh, sustainability program. Um, and so I wound up switching into that major. Um, but that was a little bit too much theory for me. So I kind of went to the other side of the spectrum. Um, and then after doing some more research, I discovered EDP, which is what I'm in now. Um, and it's essentially uh, different subsets of urban planning. Uh, people also go into different public policy from my field. Um, but I would just recommend that if you're not crazy about the major you're in, don't feel like you have to stay in it because, you know, you're worried about the paperwork or falling behind on graduation, you know, just explore the, all the options available to you. Um, and I would recommend trying to do that early if you are planning on switching, because it can get a little bit difficult um, if you wait until the very last minute. So if you have any, uh, and another thing you could do is you could maybe just take um, like a class in another field that you're kind of curious about. Um, but the process for me, as far as switching, it's, it's just filling out a piece of paperwork and then meeting with, uh, I think the advisor from the major you're switching from and the one you're switching into. So it's really not um, a big deal. I think it took maybe like a week or so once the paperwork was submitted. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much my process. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, and we have a question for Morgan, um, also about internships or co-ops in SOMAS fields. Uh, can you give us a little information about that? Absolutely. Thanks, Amanda. Um, I just want to uh, really echo James, uh, what he said before with the same question. Uh, definitely try to get in early. Um, I think me, me from my own personal experience, I think the more opportunities and the more experience you get, especially within your own field, uh, basically the more well-versed you'll be and, and be able to really choose what you like for yourself. Um, an internship in SOMAS, there, there are plenty of them. Uh, there's a lot with the DOE. Um, we actually have a, a main sector on Stony Brook campus. It's um, around the, I believe it's the west entrance. I'm not sure. It's the one closest to 25A, I believe. Um, but it, it's around back by the baseball field. Um, so I think that's a great opportunity. Um, basically, any government organization will be able to provide an internship in SOMAS. Um, and then an internship that I'm familiar with is at Brookhaven National Lab. Uh, it's called SULI. It's for undergraduates. Um, so basically, uh, the internship is going to be looking at some mRNA sequencing, and we're going to be trying to find it, trying to find uh, interesting genes that are indicative of poplar and sorghum not using as much zinc and iron. Um, basically, to be able to utilize soil that is nutrient poor uh, because soil that is nutrient dense is typically used for food. So the soils uh, go into the food. Um, and that's what I'm familiar with. And those are the type of internships you can do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and our final question of the afternoon is for Sierra. Um, can you tell us a little bit about clubs and organizations that you've been involved in and um, you know, how that process was for you in terms of getting involved and feeling welcome and part of the community here. 
Okay, uh, so I have been on campus all three years so far. I'm a junior um, and I've lived in the same room, same dorm with the same roommate um, for the past three years. So I've really gotten used to campus life since my freshman year. Um, Freshman year, I wasn't involved in any clubs or organizations. I pretty much just worked on campus, but I knew I wanted to join certain things. I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do yet. Um, and recently, in about the past year or so, I think, um, I joined two clubs. Um, I'm on the e-board for Heritage Club, um, and I'm also on the e-board for CSO, which is the Caribbean Student um, Organization. Um, and it definitely has changed since before COVID. Before COVID, we definitely had like a lot of events in person. We had fundraisers, all those kind of things. But um, since we've gone online, it's been a little bit harder. Um, but because I personally am on campus, um, for the eboard members that are on campus, we try to still do events like social distanced, of course. Um, and we do like weekly G bodies and stuff like that. Um, but we really try to utilize the spaces available. So like I'm at East Dining right now um, and there's the student union that just opened uh, across the street and we try to use that a lot for clubs so people could have some type of in-person event. You know, it's not like we're just sitting around like all day going to classes, going to bed, going to class. Like we try to make um, campus life interesting with the student clubs we have available. Um, I originally joined CSO because one of my friends joined at freshman year and I actually didn't know that the club was existed, um, but she joined as a freshman rep and then I joined later on. Um, so now I'm a public relations officer for CSO and then I joined Heritage this past semester as a event coordinator, which obviously events are kind of weird right now, but. Um, I definitely think it's easy to get involved. Um, I think like other people said, like you really just have to show up to the first few meetings, um, like see how you feel about it. I've been to other clubs as well. Like I used to work at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. So I went to the um, gardening club on campus. And although I didn't end up joining the e-board of course, um, I just think going to the meetings, kind of getting to know the people, um, how exactly the clubs work and run. Um, and then you could ask about like, how would I get involved with this club? How would I be able to join the e-board? How would I be able to do whatever? Um, is definitely easy. All the students are very open. Um, they want you to join. It's not like they're gonna tell you no. <laughs> um, so yeah, I definitely feel welcome. It's definitely easy to get involved. And I highly recommend it because I think it's also, as a freshman, it's a new way to get to know other people that might not be part of your major or might not live in the same quad as you or whatever. Thank you. Excellent job, everybody. I am really thrilled with today's program. Uh, that does conclude our Meet the SOMA students. Um, Paul Shepson has one final word before we end. Um, and just as a note, you will be able to watch the recording. So if you missed any part or want to rehear anything, check the YouTube link and the SOMAS YouTube page later. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi. Um, so first of all, I really want to thank our, our student uh, participants. You guys are awesome. Your answers were great. Uh, I think it's, a, I, I hope it's an inspiring for the, the uh, prospective students that if they come to SOMAS, they will be similarly awesome as a result. Anyway, thanks for, uh, for attending today and uh, nice to meet you and uh, thanks again. Thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful evening and we hope to see you on campus in the fall. Bye. Thanks, panelists.